In this session on agency, we're going to talk about duties to customers and the different types of agencies. So let's talk about duties to customers. A customer is someone that you do not represent. So if you are the listing agent and another company brings the buyer, that buyer and that other company are your customer, not your client. And the duties you have to customers are fairness, honesty, to act in good faith, competency, and disclosure of material facts. And this, is, this last one, disclosure of material facts, is very important. Our commissioner's rules in Arizona require that a licensee disclose any material fact which would adversely affect a consideration to be paid in the transaction. So, if you know the roof leaks, if you know the plumbing's bad, if you know there's problems with the foundation, or you suspect it because you see some red flags, you must point those out and make that disclosure. Now, in Arizona, we happen to have a statute which limits the liability or eliminates liability for agents and sellers in three different areas. The law basically says that a licensee is not liable for failure to disclose that the property was the site of a death, suicide, murder, or felony, that it was owned or occupied by a person with AIDS or HIV, or that the property is located near where a sex offender lives. Now, this may seem a little bit strange, but uh, there's good reason for it, and we'll talk a little bit more about it later on in another portion of the course. But let's take this age and HIV issue. All right, years ago, when AIDS first became known back in the 1980s, there was a lot of fear that just by touching a wall or touching something that a per an infected person had could transmit the disease. And that's clearly uh, a fallacy. But the Fair Housing Act of 1988 would put anybody who has any kind of an, an illness, such as AIDS or HIV or many other illnesses, uh, in a category of a disabled or a handicapped person. And that fair housing law prohibits telling anybody that the seller uh, uh, had, or the buyer uh, for that matter, had HIV uh, or AIDS. So with this in mind, uh, it's possible, however, since the Fair Housing Act does not protect real estate agents, that a buyer with a fear of AIDS after discovering that the seller had AIDS or was HIV positive could try to sue the agent well, the, and sue the seller. Well, the Arizona law specifically says that the agent uh, nor the seller will have liability for failing to disclose that. So this law gives that agent protection from lawsuit. Now, when we talk about duties, there's also the duties that a client has to the agent. Those duties include compensation, indemnification, and performance. The duty of compensation, well, the seller's hired you to find buyers. You find a buyer, and the seller chooses not to pay you. They have a duty to pay you. Indemnification. Indemnification means that the client will protect you against lawsuits from other parties for things that you had no knowledge of. So, for example, let's say a seller knew that the property had a bad roof or bad electrical problem uh, and didn't disclose that to you, uh, and a buyer bought the property, found the problem, and then the buyer comes against you, all right, as well as the seller. Well, the indemnification provision in your listing agreement would allow you to go against the seller or would, uh, would state that the seller agrees to protect you for... Uh, that type of lawsuit. And the duty of performance very simply means that the client, once they hire you, agrees to perform according to the terms and conditions in that employment agreement. Now, how are agency relationships created? Through what document or in what way? Well, first and foremost, to create an agency or have an agency, you have to have authorization of some sort from the principal, from the client. And that could be verbal, but most commonly and should be written. So a listing agreement, a buyer brokerage agreement, a property management agreement, these all create agency relationships. 
But what if I said to you, hey, I, you know the property I own down the street? I'd like you to go ahead and find buyers for me on that property. And you went ahead and you uh, sought out buyers and brought me a buyer according to my terms. And I said, well, I decided not to sell or I'm not going to pay you a commission. Thank you very much. There was an agency created through that verbal authorization. But remember, statute of frauds requires listings and buyer brokerage agreements to be in writing in order to be enforceable. Well, guess what? You brought the seller, the buyer. However, however, you're not entitled to your commission because of the fact that you put, didn't put it in writing. Now, you need it in writing to collect a fee in court, as I just mentioned, and also to comply with Arizona law. Arizona law says that employment agreements, listing agreements, buyer brokerage agreements, must be in writing, be signed by all parties, have the terms clearly stated, and in addition, have a definite expiration date. One of the things you should be aware of is that who pays the commission does not in and of itself create an agency. For example, a lot of times in buyer brokerage agreements, the, the buyer agrees to pay the agent a commission, but most commonly that commission that the agent, the buyer's agent receives comes from the seller's side. Meanwhile, the buyer's agent was not in any way, shape or form representing the seller. Let's take a few minutes and talk about different types of agencies. First of all, there could be an expressed agency. An expressed agency is one that's created through an agreement between the parties, a listing agreement, a buyer brokerage agreement, a property management agreement, all are and create expressed agencies. Again, it could be written or verbal. However, as a real estate agent, you always want it in writing. Then there's an implied agency, an agency created by the actions of the parties. And this typically occurs when agents interface with buyers without any written buyer brokerage agreement. So what happens here is the agent shows the buyer the property, acts like they represent that buyer. Years ago, there was a survey done by the Federal Trade Commission where they asked a lot of buyers who had worked with real estate agents uh, whether or not they were, quote, represented by their agent. And over 75% of them said they were. But in reality, in those days, in the 1980s, the way real estate agents acted, or at least contractually, they all represented the seller. So what we had is we had the real estate community basically thinking they were representing the sellers, when the buyers thought, most of the buyers thought that the licensee was representing them. Well, how did that come about? It came about because of the fact that the licensee, the agent, was acting just like they represented that buyer. So that creates an implied agency. And sometimes what we have is we have a, an expressed agency with the seller through a listing agreement and an implied agency with the buyer and what that can lead to is what's called an undisclosed dual agency. And we'll talk about dual agency in just a bit. Another type of agency is sub-agency. Sub-agency is very sim sub a sub-agent is very simply an agent's agent. So if we have a client, let's say a seller, who hires a brokerage firm. Remember, the agency exists at the level of the brokerage firm. And that real estate brokerage firm then hires you as a salesperson. You are an agent of the agent. You're an agent of the company, but you are a sub-agent of the client. I want you to keep this in mind. Real agency exists at the level of the brokerage firm. In other words, the, you as an individual salesperson cannot, on your own, enter into an agency relationship with a consumer, a buyer, or a seller. That relationship is entered into on behalf of your company. So even though you are the one directly dealing with that seller client or buyer client, the agency that's created is created between that consumer and your company.
Now we have what's called single agency. Single agency is pretty straightforward. In a situation where there are two real estate brokerage companies in the same transaction, one representing the seller, the other representing the buyer, each client is represented by a different company, therefore we have single agency. Company A represents the seller, company B represents the buyer. So there's no conflicts between uh, those two situations. What we do oftentimes have in Arizona is what's called a dual agency. And a dual agency can exist when you have two clients with one firm. So let's say that XYZ Realty is a firm that you work for and it has 200 agents, 200 licensees in the company. And you take a listing on a property and another agent in the company brings the buyer. Guess what? Since agency exists at the level of the company, not at the level of the individual licensee, we have a dual agency. Two clients, a seller and a buyer, one firm. Now, that could occur where you actually had both sides, both the seller and the buyer, or where there were two salespersons, one with the seller, one with the buyer. In either case, in either case, that creates a dual agency. So just think about this. You've taken a listing on a property and another agent from your company brings the buyer who you've never met. Because of the fact agency exists at the level of the company, you who know the seller and represent the seller directly also have the same fiduciary duties to the buyer who you never represented or never met, I should say. Meanwhile, the licensee with your company who brought the buyer also has fiduciary duties to the seller. That may seem strange, but keeping in mind that agency exists at the level of the company, not at the level of the individual licensee, there a dual agency is created in that way. Think of it in the same way that a law firm, if you had a law firm with 10 attorneys and could one attorney represent the plaintiff in a lawsuit and another attorney from the same firm represent the defendant in the same lawsuit? The answer is absolutely not. Well, dual agencies do not occur typically with law firms, but they do occur within the framework of real estate transactions and certain disclosures must be made. So disclosure to those clients and permission of both clients is required whenever you have a dual agency. And of course, some of the duties, the fiduciary duties we've talked about, have to be compromised. So what do I mean by compromised? Well, let's take the example of confidentiality versus disclosure. Let's say that in a single agency, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk about single agency. Let's say you represent, you and your company represent the seller and another company represents the buyer. And you and your seller find out, however you find out, that the buyer, even though they're offering $200,000, would be willing to pay two fifty. dollars do you have a duty to your seller to disclose that? The answer is yes. In a single agency, yes. Conversely, let's say that uh, you represented a buyer. And somehow, when talking to the seller, when you were showing the property, that you found out that the seller who's asking $300,000 for the property is willing to take $250,000. Do you have a duty to your buyer? Remember, you don't represent the seller. Do you have a duty to your buyer to disclose to your buyer that, the, that you found out or that you heard that the seller would take 250? The answer is yes. Why? Because you have a duty of disclosure of any information which would be germane to the transaction to your individual client. Now, when a dual agency exists, whether it's one salesperson or two salespersons in the same company, if you as the seller's agent knew the buyer would pay more, you can't tell your seller. Or if you as the buyer's agent knew that the seller would take less, you can't take them because you owe the duties of confidentiality and to both parties. So in that example, the duty of confidentiality trumps the duty of disclosure. However, when it comes to material 
defects, when it comes to material defects, the duty of disclosure trumps confidentiality. For example, let's say that uh, you knew that the, uh, you as a seller's agent, uh, knew that the property had a crack in the pool and termite damage. You might argue, well, my duty of confidentiality to the seller trumps uh, my duty of disclosure to the buyer. Or let's say you represent the buyer and uh, the buyer is having trouble qualifying and you're pretty sure that you, you've really come down to the wire where the buyer can't qualify. Do you have a duty to disclose that to your seller or is your duty of confidentiality to the buyer more important? Well, Arizona courts have decided this, that since the seller is interested in getting cash and the buyer's way of getting the cash to the seller is through the financing, that the duty of disclosure of that material information to the seller trumps the duty of confidentiality to the buyer. So dual agencies pose a whole bunch of different potential problems. And when you get into the profession, when you start working in the business, this will become more and more important for you to understand the disclosures that have to be given and the permission that has to be obtained. So where we start with this, with this agency disclosure, right, is making sure that right up front when you list a property and when you start working with a buyer that you have a discussion about agency. And that should be at your earliest uh, first discussion, at your first substantive discussion with that buyer or with that seller. And it should be in writing. And We have a form for this called a real estate uh, agency disclosure and election form, uh, which enables you to put this uh, this agency disclosure in writing. And of course, this ready form, uh, you have a copy of it in your course material. Uh, this is an Arizona Association of Realtors form, which uh, your brokerage firm, once you come into the business, should take the time to discuss with you and explain to you how to use it in a real world transaction. So that concludes our second session on agency, where we talked about duties to customers and also some of the different types of agencies. 